Hello, welcome to Chrysalis Invictus Tarot. Today I have for you an extra special green man reading. So guided by the spirit of the green man, I'm going to ask him for wisdom and guidance. And you have six piles to choose from. Pile number one, oak. Pile number two, hazel. Pile number three, yew. Pile number four, willow. Pile number five, beech. And pile number six, birch. So grounding your feet now onto the earth and asking for guidance, calling in your guides, your ancestors, your inner wisdom, your inner knowledge. Intuitively selecting a pile and I will meet you there. Pile number one, welcome to your reading. So you selected oak. And from this deck, the nature of, spirit of nature oracle, the green man wisdom is no one knows their fate. Oak is a symbol of strength fortitude. It also represents the spirit within us that is strengthened by adversity, by downfalls. You've come here because you have different paths that are being shown to you at this time or you have crossed a threshold or a gateway, a door and you're not yet sure who you are on the other side of this door. Five of Vessels, Ecstasy. Your expectation of passing through this threshold was that it would be a beautiful light experience and it has turned out to be very difficult. Seven of bows, clearance. There has been a lot more conflict than you expected. The oak reminds you that when it is struck by lightning, it becomes more sacred. Through survival, it is strengthened. Perhaps you were seeking salvation in ritual. And that ritual did not change things in the way that you thought it would. Uh, because you are calling in another person. You were seeking to find balance in a place that cannot give you that kind of balance. King of Stones, Wolf. You cannot cast a spell and bring in someone against their will. You have to allow the forces and the powers that be to do their work. Page of Bones, Stoat. And there is this dilemma between these two aspects of yourself, this, this part of yourself that is grounded. You know that you have blessings, you know that you have people and things in your life that are
grounded. There's an, almost an avoidance of foundations here. You're reminded that you have to put in the work to have a foundation for a loving relationship. That you can't skip, can't skip steps just because you want to. You have to allow the love and the energy to flow naturally. And you're also reminded that the timing has to be right. So while you may strongly desire a partner, and this could be a partner romantically, it could also be a business partner or a partner for something that is meaningful to you. While you may desire that very strongly, you may not be emotionally in the right place for that yet. There is still some aspect of grieving what is past that you must move through before you can come into this union. But you have put everything in place materially to, to move forward. So know that that is there for you. It may be that you wanted to do everything at once. You're reminded that things come in their own time. To remain strong and steadfast. To continue on this path. And what you are looking for is coming. With balance. I'm hearing you're not yet completely on the other side. So patience is needed. In this next cycle, whatever, this is a timeless reading, but in this next cycle of the moon, observe the patterns of yourself with this moon. Listen to when it is time to release and when it is time to manifest. Because this next moon cycle will be very important to you. That's all I have for you, pile number one. Thank you so much for joining me. Please give this video a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel so I can continue to make more of these videos for you. Thank you so much. Welcome, pile number two. You chose hazel. Hazel is a tree of wisdom. The salmon were said to swim beneath. They, were, they became wise because they swam beneath the hazel tree and ate the hazelnut. Pile number two, you've been having dreams and visions that feel prophetic or profound that you can't quite explain. You are called here to examine these dreams, these visions. And the green man's wisdom is to is to seek wisdom in the depth. To dig deeper into yourself and into your situation. And the dreams coming to the surface are part of this digging deeper. It's part of that call. You're being shown emotional and mental situations that are unresolved and yet play themselves out through your subconscious mind. And these dreams and visions will continue to haunt you unless you address them. Methods for addressing them can include lucid dreaming or journey work. Finding your way into your own mind so you can observe and be lucid through these experiences.
there's a gift that you have been given of insight, of guidance for others. And so that's why you're being called to pay attention to these to these images and to these dreams, visions. The Eight of Bows, Hearth Fire. Again, this is speaking of finding a community. So perhaps it's finding a spiritual community, finding others who experience the same things, the Eight of Arrows. You've been feeling like you are alone in this or like you're crazy. But have you observed how lucky you've been how you've managed to avoid some, some fates that the people around you end up falling into. You're divinely guided. You're divinely protected. And you see here, none of the arrows have actually hit her. But because of her environment and because of the conditions, she's unable to fully integrate that blessing into herself. She cannot see the blessing of her life because she is so deeply entrenched in her struggles. But the way is illuminated. And there is a bright fire, a collective of people that are waiting for you. And some of them will help you emotionally, some of you with your skills, some will give you the comfort that you've always needed and wanted. Within that community are people who can help you with these visions and dreams. Again, another sign of community and collective celebration, joy. Of understanding that you are not alone you're not crazy that others feel what you feel and see what you see it's finding those people perhaps you're seeing some of these people yeah perhaps you're seeing some of these people in your dream your gift of vision. It's time for it to be developed. Your way of seeing what is unseen. Your way of knowing what is unknown. When you cl close your eyes and when you go into that place of peace in your dreams, in your visions, you are prophetic. You see things other people don't see. And in finding this community, in finding this emotional fulfillment through community, you'll be better able to develop these gifts. There's some esoteric wisdom that you're looking for. And they'll be able to share it with you. And we have two final cards. So it looks like you're looking for a shaman. You're looking for a teacher. Someone who knows the natural world. The natural wisdom. And you will know it's right because it will feel fulfilling. It will feel 
right. Trust your intuition. You see here that the biggest cup is the one that he holds. The most fulfilling cup is your own, is the one that you carry with you. So your visions and your dreams are your best guidance. And that's for everyone, but particularly in your case, seek out someone who is, and they may not be, they may not call themselves a shaman. Shamanism is not something you can be certified in, by the way. It's something that spirit trains someone to be. And you will feel without someone declaring you have good intuition, so you will feel that that person is right for you. And they will help and teach you to tap into your personal power. They will teach you to use your own guides and your own inner vision to do this work. Rather than tell you what to do, they'll teach you how to do it yourself. Which is what all good spiritual guides should do rather than lead, to guide, to teach, to stand beside you. So this is your message, your green man message for today. Thank you so much, pal number two. Leave me a comment, let me know how this resonated with you. Give the channel a, a subscribe and like the video so that I can continue to make these for you. Thank you so much. Hello, pile number three, you chose the you. And the green man wisdom for this card is perseverance leads to achievement. This is about transcending a period of death and re-emerging, reinfolding yourself in life as this new person, as this new being where you no longer hold old things against you you no longer hold old things against others you recognize that youth is a time to make mistakes and you forgive yourself for those mistakes you're here today to receive a message about this new self this new path that you have found yourself on. We begin with the Three of Arrows. The card here says jealousy, but I'm also hearing arrogance that leads to heartbreak an ego that continuously protects itself and hurts itself. This heart has hung itself from the tree. And though the arrows may have pierced the heart, it hung itself and set itself on fire. So while there is injury from outside of the heart space, there is also injury from within. This new self during this transformation is being called to rewrite this narrative. To keep the heart space open, knowing that pain exists. But the heart that is not hung is not an easy target. And the fire is of your own making. So pile number three, you have protected yourself quite a bit. No judgment. <laughs> and this protection of yourself had led to some really painful experiences. And not that you're to blame for those painful experiences, but 
necessarily. No one is to blame. But that there, there's a recognition of faults on both sides. We have the king of vessels, Heron. This is a new way of living with your heart open. Allowing yourself to be exposed. Allowing yourself to be open and vulnerable. To fill your cup as well as filling those around you. The king of vessels gives without fear. And he can maintain that stoic, that stoic exterior by being calm and patient rather than walled and cold. He knows that gratitude and love, when I say he, this is just the energy, so this could be applies to any gender. He knows that his strength is vulnerability. His strength is love and gratitude. And that all things flow. And what is nourishing is also protective. And again, there's, there's been this time of, of grief. Allow yourself this period of grief to mourn who you used to be, remembering that this is what you are becoming. And that it's natural to grieve even the loss of things that are no longer meant for us or that are no longer serving us. It is okay to mourn good things, the arrival of good things. And choices were made that were difficult to get yourself here. And so there is mourning in that as well. That in order to become this king of vessels, you had to break your own heart. You may have struggled a lot with boundaries and now are, have learned to maintain them. The Eight of Stones skill. This newfound space, emotional space, the space you've created with this rebirth, this transformation, is giving you the time and space to hone your skills. So what this could mean is that you spent a lot of time emotionally supporting other people or a lot of time and energy on these, these heartbreaks, these emotional and, and intellectual pitfalls. Again, no fault there. It was necessary. It was necessary for your growth. But now that you are on the other side, You're able to develop and hone your skills. And you're reminded that you're never done. That there's always room for improvement. There's always room for mastery. And for some of you, you're picking up a skill that you had forgotten. You're picking up a skill that you haven't used in a long time. And you're learning and burning away self-doubts with this, this new love that you have for yourself. You're able to be compassionate with your shortcomings, 
with your imperfections, with allowing this growth process to unfold. Oh, and we have two final. <sighs> What's coming for you in this rebirth cycle is a divine partnership. If you're already partnered, it is the recognition of this divine partnership. Through this emotional growth and the development of your skills, you have attracted your other. In the Green Man Wisdom reading, we pull the Green Man. This is mastery of oneself and stepping into your role of leadership. Remembering that a good teacher is always learning. So, and there is a recognition of that, that, that though you are still learning and having to grow, you're still able to step into your power in a way that you haven't before. The green woman sees you sowing your seeds and watching them grow, nurturing them. The green man protects this process. So if this is not about divine partnership, that's what this is about. For some of you, this is divine partnership. That now that you know how to plant your seeds and nurture them and to protect them, and now that they know how to plant their seeds and protect them, now that you are both complete in yourselves, you can come together and begin to learn lessons together. Learning how to sow mutual seeds, how to protect those mutual seeds and watch them grow. This is a next level of intimacy of love, of the development of yourself as a human being in general. All elements are represented here. So I hope that, I hope that you're stoked. I hope that you're excited for this. I know it's been hard, but this is a beautiful, beautiful cycle you've entered into and so many blessings are on their way to you. And you've made that happen. You've done that work. So good for you. If you would like to book a personal reading with me, my information is in the description box below. Please give this video a like. Leave me a comment. Let me know how it resonated. And subscribe to my channel so I can continue to make more videos like this for you. Thank you so much. Ciao. Hello, pile number, what are we on? Pile number four, we have the willow. The willow tree here. And your message is, from harmony comes inspiration. The willow really harmonizes the world of the emotions and earth. They always grow by the water. and they will grow quite crooked, twisted and warped, but they always have a thick skin. So while they embrace the watery currents, they are resilient. It feels so resilience is why you've been brought here today to this reading. But also for some nurturing, yeah, for some nurturing support. We begin your reading with the Seven of Vessels. You may be someone who has been overwhelmed by choices in your life, that you've always had many options, 
many avenues that are possible that you can take. And so emotionally, you're pulled in many directions. The current seems to pull you in many different ways. And so you're never quite sure whether you have found the right path. The and part of sorry, there's a bus going by, it's really loud. Part of making a choice, so selecting or choosing a path is that you end up losing all the other paths or not losing them, but perhaps wondering, wondering, did I make the right choice? Even when you're emotionally fulfilled, you're questioning whether you have made the right choice. I relate this to when you go to a restaurant and you order something and then as soon as you order it you immediately begin to question yourself and then when the food comes you're eating it part of you says yes I made the right choice or yes I made the wrong choice but then you're always wondering what would the experience of that other choice have been so this is a difficulty in closing down, yeah, in closing off to other options and saying no to things. And here we have the guardian. This is a reminder that while you are in that space of indecision and while you are constantly questioning, questioning the choices that you have made, some of those other choices have spoiled, that they're no longer for you. Even if you question them, they're no good to you anymore. And this is talking about the toll that this has taken on you. Sorry, it's a loud car again. The toll that this has taken on you emotionally and physically. And how can you trust your judgments if you're always questioning yourself? So it could be that you look outside of yourself for those answers and then allow other people to make those choices but then what that leads to is a resentment of others for having perhaps chosen the wrong thing for you so this is about radical self-responsibility is the lesson here and we have the five of bows empowerment which reinforces this idea that other people make those choices for you. You let other people's opinions or ideas affect the choices that you make. And you may avoid conflict by just agreeing with people. This could be about, this could be about, um, just going with the flow on certain things when really you, you'd rather be doing something else or you have a better idea. And so there's this call here to trust yourself, to go back into the heart space and empower yourself. What is it that I truly want? What is it that I truly need to fulfill myself and fill my cup? And being really, truly honest with yourself about that. And our final cards are the Ten of Bows, 
and nine of stones, taking responsibility for yourself. So this occurs a lot in marriages where um, someone will say, oh, well, my husband doesn't want me to do that, so I'm not going to do that, um, or so I can't do that. And it kind of throws the other person under the bus. It's a bit cowardly, to be honest. Um, and I understand, like, I'm not judging. I'm just saying that that's, that's kind of what's going on here is this like, oh, well, it wasn't my choice to do it. Evading responsibility. And you're being called to make these judgments for yourself to, to usher yourself through these thresholds, through these lessons. And find yourself, your independence. Stand your ground. The Nine of Stones tradition talks about that, that feeling that comes from knowing that you have your own back. Knowing that whatever you need, whatever choices you need to make, you are able to do so with strength and tradition behind you. So this could be delving deeper into some shadow work, into your spiritual traditions. But taking a good, hard, honest look at yourself and recognizing where you avoid responsibility. If you find yourself blaming someone else, why is that? How can you be honest with yourself about who made the choice to follow that person? Resilience, bravery, courage. These are the things that are being asked of you at this time. And you can do this. You've got all the tools you need to do this. And that's all I have for you, pile number four. Thank you so much for joining me. Give this video a like. Leave me a comment. Let me know how this resonated for you. If you need any further guidance, you can book a, a reading with me. Um, the information is in the description box below. Give the channel a subscribe so that I can continue to make videos like this for you. Thank you so much. Hello, pile number five. You chose beach. And the green man wisdom from this card is what lies beyond the threshold. So you may have entered into a period of uncertainty or you may be experiencing a lot of change. Thresholds remind us of what, it, what we have, what is behind us and what comes ahead can be unknown. And so as you're passing through different states of being, the beach is also reminding you to do this with love in your heart. With generosity of spirit and being. that as you pass into these new states of being, you are affecting the collective consciousness, you are affecting those around you, you are inspiring change in others, like a beacon. And we'll see what the Wildwood Tarot has to say on this subject. So the Page of Arrows. There's an aspect of impatience that's being called forward here. Of, of not communicating, of impatience and of failure to communicate clearly your intentions.
perhaps holding back or thinking I'm crazy or this person won't understand, not giving people the benefit of the doubt. There could also be like unkind words spoken about others here, which is not something you want to bring through uh, the threshold. And this could be um, harsh judgments or ideas or things communicated about someone else, perhaps even to blend in with other people um, that are not reflective of how you feel or, or that person's significance to you. The Four of Bows talks about perfect balance and celebration, a unity of equivalent hearts and passions, a joining of complementary energies. And there may be something, this could be a mind over heart issue and the inability to trust your own intuition. So yes, this is definitely um, favoring the left brain over the right, favoring logic over intuition. This is blocking out even that you are spiritual at all. Why are you afraid to open yourself to these energies? It's suggested here that someone quite meaningful to you is very spiritual. That they are a seer or a healer, someone very powerful in the spiritual community, very magical. And this person sees that you are too. And perhaps you even see this, but you don't want to allow yourself to. You're afraid of leaving this intellectual, right-angled <laughs> way of being. And what you don't realize is that you can be both. That in fact, the most powerful healers and the most powerful teachers of spirituality are those who are able to measure both, who are able to embody both and bring both to the table. You ground your visions with research. You research the symbols of your dreams, of your visions. You find textual evidence, records of experience, and that there is a great deal of study that can be found in spiritual work if you allow yourself to be open to this path. I'm getting a very strong sense that th there is, in fact, someone in your life. So this is you reversed, being unable to trust your visions and your dreams and and your inner knowing and your inner in your magic. But this is also them. So there is a mirroring that happens of the two of you where they are lighting the way for you to become what you need to be. And this is a cycle of completion. So this could be a cycle that you are coming to the end of. You are becoming more and more aware of of your abilities, of your place in a community that values these sort of innate sensitivities and gifts that you've had all along since childhood. You've always had them. And so it's been a sort of crooked path to get there, but you are approaching the threshold. You are becoming that 
that channel, that vessel between the upper world and the lower worlds. You are beginning to embody this path. And I think there's still some resistance. There's still some, some aspect of yourself that's holding on to the past. But it's time to leave that behind. It's time to move on. You are being guided to, to find your guides, to transition from one way of being to another, to know that you, do not, you don't have to let go of yourself in order to make this transition. In fact, the transition helps you find yourself even more. And that's all I have for you, pile number five. I hope this was interesting or insightful in some way. Please leave me a comment. Let me know how it resonated. Give the video a like and the channel a subscribe so I can continue to make these videos for you. Thank you so much. Hello, pile number six. You chose birch. The first will be the last. So birch is the pioneer tree. When a forest is burnt down, it's the first tree to grow from the ashes. And because of this, it's associated with beginnings and new growth. And the green man wisdom is a good beginning leads to a good conclusion. So this is about foundations, finding yourself new, of promise there's light all around you and you can feel that warmth and using that warmth to help you grow so this could be the warmth of community we'll pull some more cards to see exactly what this is talking about it's such a beautiful card and so much light all around the way is illuminated. And we start with the Two of Stones challenge. So there's been a difficulty in balancing something in your life where a certain level of resistance seems to hinder your growth. You're being asked here, is there a way that this resistance can help you to grow? That you can recognize that this, this perpetual, um, and it is perpetual, battling of two aspects of yourself. Is this what I see this as? Two aspects of yourself. So it could be that you are both free-spirited and grounded. It could be that you are extremely um, intuitive, but also very intellectual, and you're constantly battling between which to favor. And so what is the third option here? The third option is your balance, is the way that you find the balance. The silence between the noise, the space between the action, the inaction between the action. And the surrendering of yourself to something greater than yourself. Standing at the center of Standing at the center of this conflict, this inner conflict, open and ready to release yourself to whatever is, whatever this third option is. So if you think of this as black and white, this is surrendering to gray, that center place. And trusting that the motion forward, that whatever change is coming is 
what's needed. Eight of Bows, Hearth Fire. This speaks of community. Of listening to collective experiences. Listening to and surrendering to the song that connects us all. To the stories of others. It might be... Um, it might be helpful for you to read more stories about people who have had similar experiences and to gain insight that way. And as you begin to listen to others, you begin to understand this shade of gray, this space between. Through others' experiences, it becomes more, more evident. This new beginning is an illumination, is a change of perspective. And this is not an easy experience. It's not easy to harmonize these things. And you may feel frustrated with the things that you're learning about yourself or make harsh judgments about yourself about the things that you didn't know before you knew them but remember that it is important to give yourself space to be new to recognize that it's okay to make mistakes There is something of a gift to being able to admit that you're wrong. And you may need to admit that you're wrong at some point on this journey. But also remembering that you are your harshest critic. That's coming through for some people. That you are harder on yourself than anyone else is. Allowing yourself to be open about how you feel in this new beginning, this light. Your gift is to be able to see both sides in extremes, to hear the stories of others, to harmonize this information and to create a new beginning. And while this is not an easy process, this is how your dreams are fulfilled. This is the path to filling your own cup. I'm going to pull some Whispering Woods oracle cards if there's any other advice for you. I haven't done this with any other pile, but I feel the need to risk. Learn to grow wherever you are planted. Yes. Okay. So again, this talks about the difficult path to get there. So it could be that, let's say, as an example, that you are extremely conservative and with all the political change that's going on now or you meet someone who tells you their story and you realize oh my goodness the things that i've been believing have been damaging that i need to change the way that i view these things Know that you are okay to change. That perhaps this will lead to feeling like an outcast if you are surrounded by people who agree with 
the old you, um, but your next advice card is learn. Take a lesson from the owl. Deeply observe the night and you'll become a little wiser in the day. So it's going through these struggles, going through these times. This, It's really about being wrong. It's okay to be wrong. And it's better to admit that you're wrong than to stay in some sort of righteous rightness. When all of the evidence points to something else. And how you can best embody this space, this peaceful space of being more of who you want to be. Woods, be like the woods, calm, soothing, mysterious, and full of life. So the right people will admire this and will support you in this. And you will find yourself in a new way of being. This is the birch. This is the old way of being, being burnt to the ground and coming up anew. So the major message here is it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to think. Um, it's okay to have your views challenged. And what's beautiful is rebuilding yourself in the face of that and incorporating and integrating all that you've learned into this new Sorry, bus went by <laughs> into this new way of being. Lots of growth here, pile number six. Thank you so much for joining me. If you'd like um, any further readings, my information is in the description box below. Please give this video a like, comment, let me know how it resonated, and subscribe to the channel so I can continue to make more videos like this. Thank you so much. Ciao.